In this episode of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, we visit with Duke Tobin. So you've become, you know, a member of the short list on a lot of people's uh, free agency list. I mean, is it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, we're going to make a deal with everybody. I mean, that's that's foolhardy. That can't happen. There are salary caps and other things to consider there. But the fact that you're, you you know, you can sit down and, and have a legitimate conversation with uh, pretty much anybody you'd like to have that conversation with, how big a deal is that? It's a, it's a great deal. I, I mean, you know, we want to be, we want to be uh, respectful and, and put the guys that have been with us that have produced for us that we know first that's the most comfortable way to do it. Bring right. back guys that have produced and shown they're exactly what you want. So, you know, the, uh, the Larry Ogunjobis and the BJ Hills and the CJs and the Bates and, you know, on and on uh, of guys that, that we believe can continue to help us. And we know, so uh, there's a balance in, in that. And, and hopefully we're able to do a lot of that because we want the continuity. Um, and where we're not able to do that, you know, we'll have to look outside the organization and try to find guys who fit the mold that we're looking for as well. You know, you mentioned, uh, th because of the success picking at 31, well, the year you took Joe Burrow, you know, that was, you made that decision probably pretty early. And then now you start looking at number 33 and you end up selecting T Higgins, pretty damn good pick right there to select T Higgins. So that process of, like you said, the whole pool opens up. But you've taken him at 33, uh, Jackson Carmen at 35. You know, you've had some high twos. And it, like you said, it's almost that same type of process, right? I mean, you understand. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I mean, we feel good about our, our ability to, to find guys in, in that pool. I mean, Joe Mixon right. is in that pool. Chad Johnson was in that, in that pool. You know, yep. uh, we, we feel very comfortable that our scouts will, will get us in the right direction. Uh, in in that pool, and this this draft has depth in that area, and um, and you know you just got to make the right call, and then they've got to come in and be what we think they are, and and it's so important for them to stay healthy, um, and, and you know we're looking forward to some of our guys that got hurt like Joseph Osai right. uh, coming back because you know we've got such high regard for him, and even Wyatt Hubert, you know the the guys you know when you miss the year your 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 very first year. Yeah, it can put you kind of out of sight, out of mind, but they're on our mind. And they, they both are guys that we, we think can, can help us and would have helped us this year. And so those are kind of bonus uh, picks for us going into next year and, and, and they'll have to earn it, but uh, it, it's, it's good. But we, we feel good about our scouts identifying guys in the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth. And, you know, even beyond that, the Marv Joneses of the, of the world and so forth that we've scouted out in the later rounds. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's um, th there's no question that that the draft it's the draft is gonna is gonna provide talent at you know to you at just at just about every level it always does you're always gonna unfold uh, you know talent somewhere like every year you hear people say oh this this draft's deep with offensive line this draft's deep with edge rush guys this draft's deep with corners I mean. Really, any and all of that would be good. I mean, you, there's there's um, need that you can never have enough good edge rushers. Although, like you say, you already have a couple that you, you know, are, are, because of injury, robbed of an opportunity uh, last year, but still going to be able to develop and, and see what how they how they perform and produce. All I can say is a sigh in that Tampa Bay game when he sacked Brady and he looked pretty darn good in that that time he was able to play out down there against yeah. the number ones. Yeah, we thought we had yeah. Bruce Smith going, and then uh, and then <laughs> that was it. Huh? Right, right. I'm like, whew, this guy's solid. Look at this. Um, but do you think the draft? Uh, what what position groups do you see depth, or is it is it early, too early in the preparation for you to declare anything like that? But uh, I'm sure you probably have a feel for. Is it really good with edge rushers? Is it really good with corners? Is the offensive line depth what you'd like it to be? It, it, can you comment on any of that, Duke? Well, depth only uh, only means as much as what the other teams choose to do in front of us. You know, it could be it could be really deep in one right. area, and they all would disappear in in front of us. There's going to be 30 guys gone. Uh, I can predict that pretty 
pretty uh, pretty easily. Right. And so what 30, I'm not sure. And uh, I think we're going through that that process right now. But the uh, it, it has players in every in every area. Um, you just got to get the right one and you got to be fortunate enough to have him still available when when you feel the time's right. But, you know, I, I I've never been a part of a draft that doesn't have some opportunity on almost every position. You know, this draft doesn't strike me as a uh, as a top of the first round heavy draft, but there's a lot of good football players. You know, the, the, it's not as easy to predict up in the top 10 as maybe some other drafts, um, but we're not there. Uh, we, we know that they're going to go. We don't know what order, uh, but we, we can probably cross off uh, maybe 10 to 15 guys that we know are not going to linger long enough to, to be in our wheelhouse. And then everybody else is open game for rankings for, for our pick. And, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, when we get into that process, kind of what we're looking at, but we're not there yet. Trades, you know, everybody says, oh yeah, you know, why don't you just make it trade? How difficult are trades? And when, when is the hot spot? I mean, what, what time of the year are trades probably heaviest in terms of discussion one of the Depends most important. on what 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 type of trade you're you know if you're if you're looking at draft trades that's draft day that's um during the draft that's in the mornings before the draft starts uh, if you're looking at player for player trades at you know uh, another popular time is at final cuts um uh, obviously the trade deadline is a, is a third time when when those heat up a little bit but um you know, there's a lot of trade talk. There's not a ton of trades, uh, you know, so you put a lot of effort into understanding what the options are and what the uh, needs of the other team is. Uh, everybody wants to get the best of a trade. And so, you know, nobody is, is trying to do something that's better for the team they're working with than their right. own team. Right. And so that, that limits a lot of it. And, uh, and it's, you know, there, there are successful marriages, you know, between opportunities and teams that you can find. And, you know, uh, Billy Price and B.J. Hill, that was yeah. an opportunity for both teams. I think both teams got a lot out of it because I think Billy started the entire season, you know, after mm -hmm. he got to, to New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, and obviously B.J. was an important part uh, in, in, in our due diligence on trying to find uh, another uh, third uh, interior wave defensive tackle played out, uh, you know, in the playoffs that we needed that, you know, when Larry went down. So um, there's win-wins. We try to find those because those are a little easier to do than the ones that uh, you think might be a little offsided. When you're going through the the interview process that you're going through now at the, at the combine, uh, what what types of things do you do you look for? I mean, obviously. A guy can say, "Oh yeah, I really, I really love football." How do you, how do you know if a guy really does love the game of football? I mean, do you talk to everybody there is to talk to with respect to? Yeah, so we have an opinion on that based on our sources and and yep. kind of how the guy's college career has has unfolded. So yep. we have our own opinion on that. Um, you know, it, it we try to get to it. Nobody will tell you, "Well, it's not really that important to me." But the more you talk to him, the more you put the tape on, hear him kind of express what's going on on the tape and how detailed he can be with it and uh, and 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 hear the passion, you know, in his voice when he's talking about it. You know, if somebody tells you that, oh, yeah, I, I love the NFL, that's been my my goal and my dream. And and then you ask him, you know, OK, well, you know, uh, who are the 10 best offensive tackles in your mind? I and they can't get past, you know, naming like Jonathan Ogden, who's not playing anymore. You know, right. uh, you know, it, then, then yeah. you, you know, well, is it important to you? You know, do you study, do you study players at your position? Uh, oh yeah, I, I, I really study, you know, okay, well, who are the guys? And, and they might name one or two and then, you know, cause they've had that prepared, but then you dig a little deeper. Oh, okay, well, who's our tight end? You know, who is, you know, we played in the Super Bowl. You know, if, if you love the NFL, you know, do you know that? Do you know uh, who our middle linebacker is? Do, do you, you know, if you, so it, you try to check the, the broad stroke statements that they make with a little more detail and, and you can tease out who's, who's really telling you the truth about that and who's, who's not. Um, but 
football passion, you know, you can see on the tape, uh, it, pretty evident. And, uh, and, and that's really the first wave of check. Does this guy like playing or not? Right. Uh, Cause you can see it, it jumps off the tape. So the division, the AFC North, everybody in the AFC North can play. <laughs> everybody in the AFC North is well put together and they've got players. And uh, is it, in your opinion, is it as tough a division to win? You know, that's the easiest way to get into the playoffs is to win the division. Do you think it's the toughest division to win? I've always felt that it's a very difficult place to have to play uh, year after year. It's a very hard division to win. I got the question yesterday, you know, do you build to try to win your division? Is that, mm -hmm. well, if, in my opinion, if you can win your, our division, the AFC North, you got a good chance of beating teams in the other divisions because of, of what our division is all about. It's physical. Uh, it, it's uh, it's uh, always close run. It's um, it's teams that are well managed. Uh, it, it's uh, it, it's teams with talent, long time talent that maintains its talent. And uh, so, yeah, it, we don't believe our division's going away. Uh, we don't think that it's going to be a division that that uh, is is just a lock. It, it, it's not. And uh, we feel very good about the fact that we were able to win it this year. You know, that uh, that's a good step. And, and we got to continue the belief that uh, that that this is our division. But that's our mindset. Guess what? It's the other three teams, too. You know, they they believe that, too. And they and they have reason to believe it because they're good football teams. And, um, you know, so I don't envision our division going away anytime soon. It's uh, it's definitely a, a quarterback driven league. Uh, there's no question about it. It's the most important position in all of sports, probably. Joe Burrow, when you guys decided on Joe Burrow, is he everything you thought he was and, and maybe even a little more? Yeah, you know, it's it's nice uh, when you, you put the work in, you have conviction that this is what we're going to get, no matter how high the expectation is. Sometimes the expectation isn't at the very tippity top. You know, when you're talking about players you bring in maybe in the middle rounds, but there is an expectation line. And when players meet that, it's fantastic and you feel really good about it. Now, when Joe walked in the door, his expectation line was higher than anybody's could possibly be. That's right. our expectation. He's the first overall pick. Our research tells us he's that. And then he comes in and he is that. Fantastic. And, uh, and, and that's what he's been. I couldn't tell. Yeah, I can't remember a guy that came in with higher expectations based on our research. And, and what we heard and saw with our own eyes and ears. Um, and then a guy matching that uh, because we couldn't have put the mark higher for him. And it wasn't too much for him. He wasn't pressured by it. Uh, he's Joe Burrow. And that's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's great. You know, he, he makes everyone in the organization want to be the best at their job because, uh, you know, we see him striving for that every day. I thought, uh, back to the offensive line for a second, I thought your comments um, at the Combine yesterday were, as a former lineman, were like, wow, that's saying it's because we always live vicariously through the success of our skill players. Mm -hmm. You talked about two receivers over 1,000 yards, one almost, another one almost getting there as well. A running back over 1,200 yards. Quarterback could have had 5,000 yards if he played in the last game, potentially throwing the football in top 10 and – um, in, in points scored and, and yards per play and all, all these, um, you know, great, great, unbelievable achievements. And the offensive line w was part of that. But, you know, the 70 sacks, that, that number is something that people are just going to just pound on. And there's, there, I mean, there's too many. I mean, there's no, there's no question about it. There's improvement that needs to, uh, needs to take place there. But I thought uh, the credit that you gave the O-line as, you know, <laughs> Couldn't have gotten there without those guys. I, I thought that was important for them to hear. Well, it's the truth. You know, yeah. uh, it, 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 nothing is ever boiled down into one stat. And with uh, with any one stat, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, you know, uh, are we open to improvements in any area? Absolutely. Sure. Uh, but uh, we, we do realize, you know, where we are with some guys and the potential that we have with some guys. And, um, and, and, you know, we couldn't have higher belief 
uh, in Frank Pollock to uh, to continue to to uh, to improve his unit. He's he's such a fantastic coach, and the players respond to him in such a positive way. It gives the scouts freedom to to bring in a guy that needs development because we absolutely know he's going to get it, and uh, and he's going to get it as fast as he can possibly get it with Frank and and uh, again I you know I, I'm not going to apologize for a lot of aspects of our football team because I was very proud of all the aspects of our football team this year. You never have a perfect football team, but I was very proud of all the aspects of our football team. And, and we were just uh, as uh, likely to win the Super Bowl as, as the Rams were. It just uh, didn't break our way at the end. Um, and, uh, and, and that's the way football goes. But uh, uh, to get there uh, and, and do it in the way that we did, um, you know, it's uh, there's not a lot I would trade. You know, the group of guys was was a very special group of guys. Now we got to build it again. You know, you don't just get to continue on. You have to build it again, and you got to find the right pieces, and you got to make improvements in the key areas, and that's what we're focused on now. And and in order to to build it again. Um continuity in the coaching staff there was a little bit of movement but not you know not a significant amount of movement but there were some shifts in the coaching staff and there's going to be change in the from the player standpoint but the core and really I, I would think it would trickle down to all areas even the scouting department I would imagine that with success comes oh hey gee what about uh what about this guy that Duke's got over here man he's he's pretty he's pretty talented he's pretty good to be able to retain everybody and, uh, and, and try to, as they say, run it back, you know, try to build it again. Um, it's going to have a little bit of a different composition. But if a lot of the core uh, foundation pieces are there, you have a chance to build it again, don't you? That's the goal. You know, that's the goal. Uh, you, you just uh, – a team starts its chemistry in the NFL throughout the uh, offseason program, you know, after the draft when you get those guys in after free agency when those guys come in and when they get together in the locker room there's going to be some new faces uh, there's going to be some guys that uh, know each other very well and and the continuity and cohesion has to start at at that point and the thing i'm most excited about is we've got zach has built such a great culture down there of of bringing in and bringing on players very quickly making them feel uh, an importance in, in what they're there to do and how we feel about them. And, and, you know, yes, our team leaders drive that. And, uh, and that's, that's a great position to be in because I think that drives players to want to be in our locker room because it's, it's a great place right now. There's nothing better than when your players just can't wait to, you know, it, it's like anybody. Um, if you, or white knuckling driving to work every day because you hate it. And it's like, oh, you got to do this again. That's terrible. But if you just can't wait to get there because you like everything about it, there's nothing better. And that's what it seems like was going on with this team. They, they enjoyed each other's company. They wanted to be around each other, not just, you know, uh, for short periods of time. I mean, for, for long periods of time on the field, off the field, everywhere they could be. And, and uh, that that's when you know you have something really special going on, don't you? Yeah. You know, and, and we had some tough losses, Yep. but the week of practice after a tough loss looked just like the week of practice after an exhilarating win, you know, in the, in the playoffs, you know, it's uh, the guys believed in each other. It wasn't a problem for them. You know, yeah, there was, there was disappointment and, uh, you know, and, and anger after the tough losses that went away and uh, right back to belief in what we're doing and, and, and who's doing it. And so, you know, we got to build it again. Duke, I just want to congratulate you again. I mean, this, uh, this honor executive of the year, sporting news, uh, a bunch of other people should name you executive of the year as well. That should be a, a landslide in a lot of places, but it's, it's, uh, you, you've done a, a remarkable job putting it all together. And, uh, it's it's it really it really was a joy to watch honestly and and for the and, and the way the team hit its peak at the most opportune time and playing its best football when you need to play your best football all that stuff was so so much fun to watch and and it uh you know it wasn't just like happenstance and 
an overnight thing. It took time and, and a lot of work and effort. And boy, you guys, you guys put it in, boy, you put it in the time and you put in the effort and congratulations. Well, thank you. I appreciate you lap. And I appreciate you Duke. Thanks for your time. I know you're busy. Uh, go on, uncover some gems at the combine Duke. That's bring, what we're doing. <laughs> bring some more, some more great players to Cincinnati. All right. Thanks lap. Have a great week. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You know, yeah. you know, you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.